All right, well, thank you guys for coming out and for braving this this weather. Hopefully, it'll hold out for a while. For a while. First off, I want to thank uh, Jade for setting this up for me and Infinite Disc for coming out and filming. Really appreciate it. Go Prodigy. Uh, today, I decided to do more of like a demonstration than, than a hands-on with, with, with everybody um, since we're filming. Uh, today, I'm going to focus on uh, grip, angle control, and follow-through. Uh, I'm basically going to tell you and show you exactly how I do it, and then hopefully you'll be able to take something from that and uh, apply it to your game and use it from there on out. So uh, one of the most important things in disc golf is angle control. Um, I see this with a lot of amateurs, that the angle control just isn't there quite yet. And what I mean by that is when you throw, you get the nose up, turnovers are tougher, angles are a little bit tougher, and when you see the top pros in the world, it seems like they got it, you know? It seems like when we're throwing, the angles come easier, we get a little bit more power, and I'm going to explain to you how we actually do that, okay, and how I do it. My grip is pretty typical. I, I, I call it the power grip. Most people call it the power grip, where I take my hand, I put the disc in this crease right here in my hand, and then I just curl my fingers all the way up in there. And that's, that's what you call a power grip. Now the reason I do this, the reason I put the disc in this crease is because that crease is now never going to move. Okay? So the way I think about it is once I put that disc in there, that's going to be my grip forever on drives, right? And that crease isn't going to move. And what's that going to do for me? That's going to make sure that my consistency is just like spot on. And not only that, now I'm going to have angle control. And let me explain how that works, okay? With that crease going all the way up my arm, when I throw the shot, I don't even have to worry about the disc anymore, okay? And this is where the angle control comes into play. What I mean by that is now that I got my grip, I got my angle control, now follow through is the most important thing for us, okay? And what I mean by that is I put that in the crease, now through impact of my shot, wherever I'm going to throw, on whatever angle I want to throw, all I have to do is follow through with that crease all the way through my shot and up until the follow through can't go on anymore. Okay, and this is where I'll give a, a small demonstration. Can I get somebody to come up here? Anybody? Yep. I want you to put this on any angle. Doesn't matter, just tell me to throw a angle or a shot. So kind of like, like an Annie, maybe? Okay. So he says he wants me to throw it on this angle. Could I get you guys to move this way a little bit? All right, so let's get that on camera. See, that, see this angle? For most people, that would almost be a tough angle to throw and to hit every single time. But because I have this nice little trick, I put it in my hand. That crease is never going to move. Now all I have to tell myself is, okay, that's my angle I want to throw, which means... All I have to do is follow through all the way through, and it's impossible for me to miss that angle, okay? <sighs> so this is the angle he wants. Now, I don't want you to watch where the shot goes. I want you to see the angle it comes out. This is a really stable disc, so as soon as it comes out, it's going to want to fight left. But I want you to see what my hand does through impact. I'm going to follow through as much as I can all the way through impact, okay? <sighs> You see how it came out on that exact angle that I pretty much hit the angle you wanted me to? Okay. And now what that also does is it when it's in that crease and going all the way up your arm, when I follow through, I'm putting perfect spin on that. Okay, and what I mean by that is if I had it in my hand and it was kind of like hanging down like this and not going all the way up my arm, that would be a tough thing for me to do, to hit this angle, because now my follow through is with my hand. And that's where you get a lot of you guys who are rolling your wrist over and it's tough to hit that angle. Or you're trying to throw flat, but you're rolling over and that spin is making it torque over. See, I can take a flippy disc, like this is one of the flippiest discs in my bag and I could get one of you guys to throw it and it's just gonna roll over, right? But because I'm putting that nice spin on it, which means when I throw this shot, with that nice follow-through, 
the torque that I'm putting on to it, I'm not rolling over. So I'm not going to pop it to where it's going to want to fight right. It's going to want to hold whatever angle I put on there because of the nice spin that I'm putting on, right? So this is a really flippy disc. I'm going to try to release it on hyzer, and it's going to fight that for a very long time. And all I have to do, crease, follow through, and make sure that I'm follow throwing on whatever angle it is. So you tell me an angle to put this on. Maximum hyzer. Maximum yeah. hyzer. Yeah, right, right down it. Right there? Yeah. Okay. So now watch the hand again in the crease. And now all I'm focusing on is making sure through impact that my hand goes up on that angle through the whole entire angle. Okay. See, that's a really flippy disc. But because I'm putting that much spin on it, it's fighting. It's pure spin, right? So that's where you get us that, well, a lot of the top, top players, they have that good spin, and everybody's always like, God, it looks so easy. Like, it doesn't even look like you're throwing it. Well, we're putting that good spin on, and not only that, we're manipulating the disc now. Now when you have that perfect spin, if I'm throwing a flippy disc, and I hit it really hard, it's not going to act like a lot of people. You know, it's not going to act like, you see some people have a little wobble in their, in their, in their throw. They have to stable up, because as soon as that wobbles, and as soon as the wind hits it, or as soon as they miss their angle at all, that thing's going to roll over. It's not going to be a consistent hit or a consistent angle. And so that's why grip and follow through is the most important thing when you're talking about consistency, spin, hitting your line pretty much every time. You guys got any questions with that? Yeah. yeah so like on a high flip shot, for mm -hmm. example, just putting a little bit more on that angle and letting the disc flip up? Absolutely. You just, um, you're just going to have to now go, go practice what I'm saying. And then when you hit it on that spot, whatever the angle is, you're going to see that from the, well, you do it right now. Well, yeah. Yeah, just get, uh, is it pretty flippy or pretty stable? Flippy okay, so what I want you to do is, how does it usually fly for you? Give us a, it'll, an it'll example. It'll pop up, depends on how good I hit it, you know. Okay. It can, it can get some turn on. So what I want you to do is I want you to just try to throw it straight with a little hyzer and get it to pop up. But this time I want you to follow through with that angle. That's all I want you to think about is the follow through on whatever angle it is. Okay. <laughs> He's going sidearm roller. <laughs> He's going to hide in front of the tree. Now you said it usually flips up. And I think I released it a little late and I came up on it. But you still follow through, and it, through. and it definitely didn't want to flip. Yeah. Right? And I, I just think I give maybe too much. I okay, let's try it again. Right. Even get a flippier disc if you want. D6. D6, <laughs> perfect. So, yeah, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go, slow it down, and the only thing I want you to focus on is follow throughing on, on that little hyzer flip angle, okay? okay? You don't have to throw it extra hard. Just follow through, and it'll do a little bit more for you. I mean, it still didn't flip. Yeah, it pops up. I think, I think it's because I'm focusing on that follow through. Mm -hmm. I'm like holding it long. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely going to take a little, a, a little bit. And so I'm like releasing it high instead right. of like flat on the right. angle. I'm just popping it up. Right. So this is like a super flippy disc. Uh -huh. Okay. And when I'm, when I'm going to throw this, I'm going to focus on hitting it as hard as I can and try to get it to flatten up and go almost straight towards Jade past that. Now, this is what I want you guys to focus in on. I'm not going to throw this really hard. Like, it's not going to be an aggressive move, okay? It's going to be that good timing, and then the follow-through is all I'm going to focus on. And when all that stuff comes together, that's when you're going to get that easy distance, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially accuracy and angle control. So, the follow-through. Watch the follow-through. You see, that was just a little two-step move, and that went about 420 or so on just a little two-step. Yeah. The biggest thing for this is also is when it has to do with, like, stable discs. I feel like one of the hardest shots for a lot of people to throw is when you're forcing something over. You know what I mean? Forcing something over and then trusting it that it's going to come back. Right, absolutely, especially at high elevation. That's a great point. Um, 
And that's really where this is, this is coming um, into play, is that follow through like this. Manipulating your angles, especially with stable discs, is great for windy situations. Um, you get into a windy situation where you have, you know, 20 to 30 mile per hour left to right crosswind or right to left crosswind. And you don't have like a sidearm that's going to get there or something, but you know if you throw a flippier disc, it's just going to roll over. The wind's just going to attack it. But when you have stable disc and you have that follow through and you have the angle control that you need to, you can really get it to do whatever you want. Um, like this is H1, like the most stable disc that Prodigy makes is similar to a Firebird or something like that. You see where Jade is? What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to turn this through here, flip it around, and then skip it to where he is, right? And it seems like it'd be a tough shot, right? It seems like it'd be a tough shot to get something to move this way and then that way. But it's really not, especially since I have the control over it to where no matter what I, what I do, if I follow through on that, that's what the disc has to do. I have perfect control. Another way to explain it is I don't even think about this disc anymore. I don't even think that it's in my hand. I know that if my body does what it's supposed to do, this isn't going to move anywhere, right? And so if I follow through, that's the angle it has to be on, right here, whatever this hand is doing. If I need it to be a turnover, that's what I have to do. I don't think about the disc. The disc is going to naturally come out, right? I just think about coming over it and then follow throughing with my hand all the way through impact. So watch, I'm going to put it on this angle because I know once I do that, it's going to want to fight. And then watch it come back and skip right to him. You see what I mean? There's nothing, it's, it seems difficult, but once you practice that and you practice that follow through, it becomes way easier and way easier over time. Any other questions? So when you're, saying, when you're talking about the follow through and the angle release, are you talking about leaving the disc on the same, or, or like, uh, what's, what's your focus, I guess, on what point of the, the angle? So I think what you're asking is, are you asking about impact zone? Or are you asking about when the disc is actually coming out of my hand? Or are you asking it's out of your, and like what you're, I mean, obviously you, you were saying you don't even pay attention so much that there's the disc in your hand. Right. Just the, uh, the, I guess, what, what are you focusing? I mean, you're, what's on going on in your mind? Right, what's going on in my mind? So let's say this is, uh, this is my T pad, right? And uh, I want you guys to make an imaginary hole out there and then an imaginary shot. And then I'll take you through what goes, what's going through my mind to get there. Like we could even go to this basket, we could go, the tree with the tape on there, okay. And now what shot would you like me to throw to, to get there? Pretend those trees down there on the left are real big, so you kind of, and these are too, so you kind of got to. I got to throw like a nice turn into there? Okay. So what I would, what would go, let's say this is my tee pad, okay. What would go through my mind to throw this shot? Um, I'll go a little bit past it, okay? So what will go through my mind, like you said, these trees are, are a little bit high over here, so I'm not going to be able to go over them, so I have to throw this gap shot, okay? When I step up to the tee pad, now I got to see, okay, do I need to throw mid-range? I got to get the distance right, whatever. But when it comes to what I'm telling you guys with the angle control, I first I need to know how my discs fly with my power and everything, which all of you guys already know, pretty much. If you've played a long time, you know what your discs do, you know what your discs do when you throw them, whether they're flippy, stable, whatever. I know that if I hit this thing flat, if I hit it flat with a little bit of power at this angle, no matter what, it's going to do a little baby turn and float all the way to that spot. So now all I got to think is, okay, now how do I make sure to hit this angle? That's the tough part, right? And that's what I'm trying to get through to you guys. This is the tough part. Anybody can throw that distance, but how many of you can throw that distance, hit that angle every time to where it's a consistent flight, right? To where it's a consistent flight. I have this grip, and I know I have this follow through to where no matter what, I'm going to hit that angle, right? And that's the tough part, is to make sure that that's where you get that consistency. I have that angle, I have 
my grip, and now all I have to do is run up in the direction, right, that I want to throw, and then follow through with this disc flat, and then follow through all the way through, and I know this thing's going to turn right at that, right at that tree. So watch the follow through. I released it flat. That's up. Oh, sorry, buddy. Try it one more time. I'm actually missing a disc. I think I did, maybe. I'll try a mid-range for you guys. I'll try this one. And this one I'll try to land like flat. I'll try to like scoot it kind of up to the tree for you. But I know if I hit it flat with a little bit of turn, follow through. Oh, I slipped. But it's still kind of working that way. See what I mean? And that's another thing. Even though I slipped, my follow through still held that disc. You know what I mean? It still tried to like hold my, hold my shot and turn it to where I, I wanted it to be. Follow through is everything, guys. Like I said, perfect spin, um, angle control. Let's get a couple of you guys up here and try and. How much is your footwork going into angle integrity? Like, are you using your footwork to get a turn on a disc? Like, when I try and throw a power shot, I've been taught that you want to, like, move this foot out a little bit more to, like, force your body. No, I, I actually, I don't, I don't think about that. I think, um, you know, no matter what, whatever position my body's in, obviously, if I'm throwing hyzer, I'm going to be more over top of my body like this to get a better angle, and I get that power to come up. And when I'm throwing turnover, obviously I'm going to be a little more upright because that's easier for my body to get into position. I don't think about my feet. Right, I don't think about my feet. I just think about that. And then, like I said, follow through with that crease all the way through impact. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. See now what I want what I want everybody to notice is he yanked it a little bit, but it came out on the angle that he wanted. And that's what we're trying to focus on. We're not trying to focus on like exactly where it's coming out here. As long as you have that angle control, that's what we're trying to learn right now. Go ahead. So when you're following through, are you pushing like your your back arm through? So like I am not. I'm not focused on that. I'm I'm expecting my body to kind of work with itself and um, I've heard a lot of people say that, that when they throw, they want to really rip this arm through, but I'm a firm believer that your body's going to naturally work with itself and, and kind of do it, As, especially, yeah, it'd be, if you watch like the best players in the world, this, this really isn't doing anything, it's actually here, it's out of the way, like when you're throwing, you watch this, this is like a balancing kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, that just helps them continue their follow through if they like. Sure, it's through. after the disc has already left your hand that this hand's even going to do anything. Like you're here and then it's here. And after you throw, obviously, then it's going to come up because your body has to kind of come through. And so that's going to just help you come all the way kind of through the shot. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That was good. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to get your next shot. I want you to slow it down and only, only focus on your follow-through, which means like throwing and then after the throw, making sure that this hand's in control and doing what you want it to do. Slow it down. There you go. That was better. How'd that feel? A lot better? Good. That was better. Flat. Flat. That's what we're looking for, man. See, this is, this is something that you guys are going to take. I want you to take this to the field. It's not something that you're going to be able to do right away. But once you learn your impact zone and then where the disc is coming out, that's when you're going to gain that, that angle control. You know what I mean? Go, coming in here and then trying to do a completely different follow through, it's going to be really, really foreign to you guys. But with time and, you know, a little bit of practice, I think it's going to come a lot more natural. And, and uh, another thing is 
when you're practicing this, the slower the better so that you can kind of feel what's going on. Um, if you're just going to go up there and, and go really fast and try and throw it a million miles, it's going to be hard to see, okay, did I hit my angle, did I not? Your disc is going to be doing different things. But if the best thing that I can say to work on angle control is to get your most stable disc and then try to manipulate those angles exactly how you want them, especially with turn turnovers because if you mess up a little bit with a stable disc, it's going to come out right away and you're going to see right out of your hand whether you hit your angle or you didn't. So I would suggest that. Four. 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 That looked pretty stable. <laughs> Do you have another stable disc? Me? Yeah. That one is? Okay. So when you're running up, I see that you're kind of like leaning over here and then trying to come up like this, okay? Let's put this in your hand right there. Curl those underneath. And what I mean by impact is once you throw this right here, this thing, okay. this is now your this is now your your shot. Okay. Okay? Where that goes through your impact is the angle that this has to come out on. It has no other choice. Okay. So if you come up and then you, you're coming out of it or you're coming like this and over, it's still going to come up on a hyzer. If you're trying to go here, release, and then come down, it's still going to want to come out like this right away. Okay. So if you want it flat, start it flat, straight through, through impact, flat all the way through. Okay. okay? And slow it down, slow, to where you know you can make it, make it happen. Now watch that hole right there that you're about to step in too. So slow it down, follow through. That was better. You definitely came over on it. No, it was slower. <laughs> 